Welcome once again to Jesus or Muhammad. There are lots of people in history who want to tell you about God, who want to tell you what God is like, people who want to tell you uh, what you should believe about God. Uh, but two of the main contenders of people we should listen to are Jesus and Muhammad. And uh, Muhammad certainly uh, didn't have much evidence going for him, but he has more than a billion followers in the world, and so it's important to pay attention to what he said and to respond uh, to the arguments that Muslims give. Uh, on the other hand, we have Jesus, who died on the cross and rose from the dead. I'll tell you, if I'm going to listen to anyone tell me about God or about heaven or about salvation, I'm going to listen to the one who rose from the dead. Amen. On lots of these shows, we uh, address Muslim claims. We address claims about the Quran. We address claims about Muhammad. We address claims uh, about Muslim beliefs. Uh, we have debates as well, um, but we also want to defend the gospel. We want to defend uh, our scriptures. We want to defend uh, the core Christian doctrines, which usually center around Jesus' death, his resurrection, and his deity. And it's very interesting when we deal with Islam that uh, Muslims agree with us on lots of things. Muslims agree with us that Jesus was born of a virgin. There's no debate between Christians and Muslims on whether Jesus was born of a virgin. There's no debate between Christians and Muslims on whether uh, God created the world. There's no debate between Christians and Muslims on whether Jesus is the Messiah or on whether Jesus performed miracles. We agree on these things. And yet the things we disagree on are the very things that that compose the core of the Christian gospel. When we go to the book of Acts, we see that as the apostles went out and spread the gospel, their message centered on three issues. Jesus' death by crucifixion, his resurrection from the dead, and his claim to be Lord. So these are the three things, interestingly, that according to the New Testament, false teachers are going to come and corrupt. And we look to Islam and we find that Islam agrees with us on so many things, but not on these three core issues. According to Islam, Jesus didn't die on the cross, he didn't rise from the dead, and he never claimed to be divine. He never claimed to be Lord. And so, who's right here? Someone's got to be right. Either Jesus rose from the dead or he didn't rise from the dead. Either Jesus died by crucifixion or he didn't uh, die by crucifixion. Either Jesus claimed to be the divine Son of God or he didn't make that claim. Someone's right and someone's wrong here. So, who's right? Well, in order to uh, in order to get to the truth here, we need to look at the evidence. We need to consider objections. And tonight we're going to focus on some Muslim objections. In fact, we're going to be uh, focusing on objections by someone I would regard as uh, the, the, the best Muslim debater on the planet as far as uh, someone who's criticizing uh, Christianity. And so tonight, uh, most of this program is going to be handed over to Sam Shamoon. Uh, those of you who have been missing Sam, he's certainly back. Uh, Triple B himself, right. big, bald, beautiful, uh, is here, and he's going, to, he's going to be taking on the claims of Shabir Ali. Now, Sam, you, you debated Shabir Ali way back yeah, in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember the year, actually. <laughs> I think it was, uh, what, 2000, 2001. The topic was the Quran or the Bible which is the Word of God. And that was my first debate. And if you want to watch it, it's actually available on David Wood's blog, which is also a blog that <clears throat> you know I'm involved with. When I say his blog, obviously, we're partners. And not by choice, by the way. <laughs> Strong case for predestination. It was predestined for me and him to get together. But if you want to watch the debate, it's available on answeringmuslims.com. www.answeringmuslims.com. And you watch it, and you tell me what you think. Uh, how well I did. But, you know, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord Jesus for again allowing me to be here with my, my partner and one of the premier apologists that God has raised up in the 21st century. And I don't just say that lightly, I mean that. Uh, my brother David Wood, and I see that you got the beard going, huh? Uh, What's going on here? <laughs> Why? Uh, of all people, you're the last one who should be bringing this up. So j yeah. just so everyone knows, no, I'm not trying to grow a beard. It takes me longer than this to, to grow a beard. This is a case of me having a new razor and Sam Shamu not having one and stealing it when I'm not looking and using it to shave his head so he can my, have that cool, my bald, bald, beautiful head exactly. uh, look going on. Now, Sam, yes. how, how would <clears throat> I would place Shabir Ali at the top of yeah. people I would be, uh, you know, preparing for seriously in a debate. There, yes. there are Muslim apologists out there 
that you know I'll walk I'll walk I'll walk on stage with right now. If they said, "Hey, let's debate after the show," okay, let's go. Yes. Uh, there are some that you'd want to seriously prepare for, mm -hmm. uh, and at the top of that list of people I would want I would seriously want to prepare for debating uh, would be Shabir Ali. Yes. What, what, how how would you place him on the scale? Yeah, um, as far as uh, <clears throat> personality goes, as far as mastery of the material goes, as far as being able to use that material to his advantage, Shabir Ali is the best Muslim apologist, bar none. Mm -hmm. Now, again, let me qualify that. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, because I've analyzed his debates over the years, and not just his, I've analyzed the debates of Muslim apologists such as Jamal Badawi, uh, <clears throat> because of the religion, <clears throat> because of the spirit that produces religion, Muslim apologists like Shabir Ali do not hesitate to distort and pervert sources, especially the scriptures, perverting them out of their context in order to mislead people into thinking that the Bible teaches something contrary to what it actually teaches. And because of that, I really get upset, and at sometimes I even get irate that they would do that, because as our brother in Christ, Dr. James R. White says, as a Christian, we're committed to the truth, and we want to honor the God of truth. And one thing as, as Christians we do not do is deliberately manhandle and pervert the sources of other groups, because that would shame the Lord Jesus who said that He is the truth. But again, from a Muslim perspective, I can understand why some Muslims would employ such tactics because again, for those of you who speak Arabic, you can confirm this by looking at chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 54, Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 54. It says that they schemed, meaning the Jews schemed, plotted against Jesus, and Allah schemed, and Allah is the best of all schemers, Khairun Makirin. Khairun Makirin. Those of you who know Arabic know that the word Makir actually means one who is a deceiver a conniver, a trickster, a schemer, so it's negative. And here Allah, the God of Islam, says that He's the best of all these who deceive and scheme. Well, if that's a description of the Muslim God, should it surprise us that the followers, the adherents of this God, would also employ deceptive tactics in order to mislead people from the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I had to add that ca caveat. Yes, He is their premier apologist. And, and, and I would add that, that Shabir has kind of um, an added inconsistency. The, the inconsistency uh, rises to another level with someone like yes. Shabir in that he yes. attempts to appeal to critical biblical yes. New Testament scholars when he would never dare apply similar 100%. scholarship to the Quran. And this is something that, that, that someone like James White has pointed out often in his debates with Shabir Ali. Most Muslims who would argue against Christianity have never read uh, any you know, Western scholars, what Western scholars say about the New Testament. Uh, but Shabir is someone who uh, applies critical scholarship to the claims of Christianity and says, well, here's what this critical scholar says, and here's what yeah. this scholar says, and let's look at your claims. But he would never do that exactly. with the Quran, because if he did, he would have to drop almost everything he believes about yeah. the Quran. And so what you have is, uh, in the case of someone like Shabir Ali, great speaker, obviously a very intelligent person, again, uh, someone I would really you know, want to spend a lot of time preparing for uh, if I were to debate him, which, by the way, we've challenged him to, uh, to uh, uh, defend his claims in public debate repeatedly. Um, but the inconsistency is, is mind-boggling. Yes, I mean, truly. I mean you, you can understand someone not seeing his own inconsistency because, you know, we can all do that, right? We can all have blind spots. And, you know, we're focused on one thing and, you know, we're, we're, we're not thinking about how inconsistent we're being. But Shabir Ali can't claim that, 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 you know, he's unaware of this just because someone like James White has shown it to him over and over and over again like a beating drum. Look, here is the standard you're applying to Christianity. Here's how you're attacking Christianity. Why do you not approach Islam in the same way? And as Christians, we don't do that. We are happy. We're happy to say whatever standard, whatever criticisms we are applying to Islam, we're happy. We're happy to defend uh, the Lord Jesus Christ using that, using the same methodology, using the same critical standards. Um, but in Islam, you can't do that. And there's a very simple reason you can't be consistent as a Muslim. If you were consistent, you'd have to leave Islam. And so the moment you become consistent, you leave Islam. And so if you're going to remain in Islam and criticize Christianity, you have to be applying double standards. You have to be illogical uh, in your approach. And we're going to see some of this tonight as we examine some of Shabir's uh, responses to a core Christian belief. Again, this is, this is one of the main differences between Christians and Muslims. We believe Jesus is Lord. We believe in the incarnation. We believe God 
entered creation as Jesus of Nazareth, Hallelujah. and Muslims do not believe that. They say that's false. Again, we have to ask who's right, and Shabir Ali is someone who spent an awful lot of time pointing out uh, supposed difficulties with our beliefs, things that show that our belief is wrong and the Islamic view is right. Now, Sam, you've pointed yes. out you don't think Shabir is being uh, accurate or honest with the, yes. with the uh, source material he's using. Um, can you give us an example? Yes, in fact, uh, it is my habit to always beseech our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to bless us as we speak. So, again, let me just take a moment to beg the God and Father of our majestic and glorious and risen Lord Jesus Christ to anoint both David and myself and bless all those behind the scenes, anointing us by His Spirit to sp speak the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ accurately, clearly, and I beg the Father to protect us from error and from misrepresenting even what Muslims believe, and I pray that everything we do will be purified in the blood of Jesus, sanctified by the Spirit, so that what we say and do will be for the glory of Jesus and not the praise of men. We beg the Father in Jesus' name for that blessing, for His glory, so that Muslims get convicted, fall in love with Jesus, and Christians get strengthened, knowing that they have the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead, never to die again, in Jesus' name. Now, yes, what I'd like to do tonight, if the Lord wills, is address some of the claims that you'll find in his debates, specifically in a booklet that he produced. He produced a book basically saying that the Bible denies that Jesus is God. Now, you can find this on the Internet. You can actually do an Internet search, Shabir Ali, S-H-A-B-I-R, B as in boy, I-R, Ali, A-L-L-Y, and type in, is Jesus God? The Bible says no. Is Jesus God? The Bible says no. Because I want you to go and read his arguments for yourselves. Because what I want to do is address his arguments with, as, with the time that's allotted to me. Obviously, I can't address every single argument. But Lord willing, I want to be intentional in that I would like to do a series of responses to the best objections that the Muslims have against our faith. So I can help my brothers and sisters in Christ to learn how to refute <clears throat> miscitations of our scriptures. Now... With that said, let me just look at a chapter in his book called The Greatest Commandment in the Bible and the Quran. Now, what Shabir does here is he quotes the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 12. For the context, it's Mark 12, verses 28 to 34. There, a, a scribe, one who, was, who knew the law very well, asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? So what does the Lord Jesus say? He re recites what is known among Jews as the Shema, specifically Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5 which and again in Hebrew is Shema, which means here. And it goes like this. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. To translate in English, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, or the Lord, our God, Yahweh the Lord, is one. Now Shabir argues from this that Jesus is denying his deity, that according to Jesus, God is one, and he's not that one God. Now notice what he's trying to do. He's trying to appeal to our very scriptures, the scriptures that God gave us so that we can know God intimately and enjoy Him and love Him. And not only to know God, but the scriptures, being the inspired Word of God, happen to be the sword of the Spirit. If you go to Ephesians 6, 17, specifically verses 10 to 20, if you read Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20, Paul says that God has given every Christian a battle armor. Because here on earth we are the, uh, we are the church militant. We are called to do battle against the kingdom of darkness and destroy it as we advance the kingdom of Christ through the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, I didn't say advance the kingdom of Christ by taking physical swords and killing people, pillaging them and raping their women. But is there, is there a religion that does teach that? Oh, Sam? sure. We know what that religion is. <laughs> it's Islam, right? Contrary to what Muslims may say, that is Islam. Our weapons are spiritual. They're not carnal. They're not fleshly. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. One of the weapons that God has given us to do battle effectively is the Word, which is called the sword of the Spirit. So the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, and the Scriptures are the revelation, the words of God, that were inscripturated by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So here, this is our weapon. We are called to use it against those who would seek to pervert the truth of Christ, convicting them with the hopes that the Spirit will use our witness to bring them to the feet of Jesus. Yet sadly, the enemies of the gospel are using our sword against us, and I dare say more effectively than many Christians I know. And that's sad and that's unfortunate because we need to know this book. In order to know God, we need to know this book. 
Because when we read this book, God speaks to us. And if we want to know God and be in love with God, we need to know this book inside and out. And once we do, no one will be able to refute the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and Sam, uh, and I think that's a very important point because if you read Shabir's arguments and you don't know the Bible very well, lots of this would sound very persuasive, wouldn't it? Uh -huh completely persuasive yeah so it, it would sound like he's got a slam dunk case i Precisely. mean but and, and let me let me let me put it differently if you haven't studied the word of god for yourself and you instead open up shabir's booklet to get his version of what the bible teaches it's going to sound very it's going to sound very good isn't it it's going to in fact that someone who doesn't know the bible is going to sound so convincing that you're going to wonder how in the world did the christians come up with the doctrine of the trinity that's mm -hmm. how convincing of a case he can make mm -hmm. And it's not only him, it's others like him who distort the scriptures and unfortunately to their own destruction. Our prayer is that the Holy Spirit will grant them repentance, even Shibri Ali, because hell is a long time. The wrath of God will be poured out upon all unrepentant sinners forever. So hell is not something to joke about. Hell is not something to take lightly. So may the Lord Jesus have mercy on people like Shabir, like he had mercy on us, and pity their souls and grant them repentance leading to life. Uh, just like the Lord had mercy on me, I pray that for him and others, even though it does upset me when they pervert the scriptures in order to mislead people. But however, remember what Paul says. Our battle isn't really against them, right? It's not against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6.12, but it's against principalities and powers and authorities in the heavenly realms. In other words, Shabir Ali and others like him are actually agents being used by wicked, unclean spirits to mislead people from the only truth of God and from the sovereign Holy Spirit of the living God. But again, he that is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And we already have the victory because of the blood of Jesus and the fact that he's conquered the grave, sin and Satan, by rising from the dead never to die again. So we're already victorious. We are more than conquerors, Paul says in Romans chapter 8. So we have the victory, brother. Yeah. We just need to proclaim it in Jesus' name. Now you said, you said, uh, no, we, we, we both agree that Shabir's arguments can seem persuasive if you don't know what the Bible actually said. What do these teachings look like? What do Shabir's arguments look like if you know what the Bible teaches? Uh, well, from my perspective, because by the grace of God, again, everything good comes from the Lord Jesus. Everything good comes from our sovereign triune God, so he gets the glory. Because of the grace of God and enabling me to see what scriptures teach, these arguments are not only sad, but they're rather pathetic if you know the scriptures. And I, and I say that with complete confidence, right? And in fact, I hope he calls in so we can test that claim. So it's not only sad. And why do I say it's sad? Because it disheartens me when people misuse the word of my God, who is the God of all flesh, the God of all creation, in order to mislead people. It actually breaks my heart and angers me. But it's also, <clears throat> when you see their arguments and you ex examine them, you see how pathetic these arguments are. In fact, that's what I want to do. I want to show how pathetic that argument is. Uh, if we have the time, are we going to go to a caller or should I address the point? Uh